Really excited about this one, guys. We got the odds makers in the house. He's Mark Dufty, standalone at Jerry's Nugget. Over here, we got Jason Symbol, Vice President, Sportsbook Operations with CG Technologies. And we are the only game in town, wagertalk.com, to have odds makers from two different books on the same panel leading into Super Bowl 50. We're very proud of that. And I wanted to mention to both of you guys, first of all, for letting us make this happen. I mean, it's a ridiculously busy week for both guys, and you've taken the time to come down to the studio, talk with us for a few minutes. Appreciate both of you guys doing this. Happy to come down. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. Mark, I mentioned at the top, you're a standalone odds maker. You're a standalone book at Jerry's Nugget. And we're going to get to something in a minute because before we shot these videos today, you were still standing alone when it came to the spread. And I want to get to that in a minute. But Jason, Matt was telling me last night, Matt Holdover, CJ T Technologies, that if we were shooting this video Tuesday, just 48 hours earlier, we would be doing a much different video than we're actually talking about today. Tell us what's happened in the last 48 hours. Oh yeah, Tuesday afternoon when we were looking at the bets, there was about 85% of the spread bets were on the Panthers, right? So obviously that's a huge number, tremendous liability. And then over the next few days, you've seen the lines kind of come down in some of the places. And that's because now that number's gone from about 85% to nearly 60%, a little under 60% actually. That's the actual tickets taken? That's the actual money count, the money on, the, count. on the spread bets. Okay, yep. So is there a big difference right now between ticket count and your handle on the money as far as the percentages? Not that big. Obviously, there's a m way more tickets that have been written on the Panthers. Sure. Bigger bets have come in on the Broncos, so that's kind of why those numbers are where they are. I got to ask you, because I was all prepared to say, you know, I've looked at every book in town. I've looked at every offshore. A couple of hours ago before we shot this video, I was getting ready to leave the house, and I'm going, there he is, man. He's standing alone again. He's got Carolina up there at six. You were the last book, I think, in the state of Nevada to come back down from six. So tell us a little bit about what happened at Jerry's Nugget to move that number down. We got st steady gradual action uh, right up the number, took us to six, mm -hmm. and uh, we weren't seeing the Denver comeback money. So uh, we left it at six until, uh, until we got someone to buy back, and, and uh, we finally have that this afternoon. So yeah, we were, we were one of the last sixes to appear, and then we were the last six to, to, to hang on to. So right now we're five and a half, and we'll have to see what the weekend uh, has ahead of us. You knocked my, it's funny because I was all prepared to say, okay, Mark, it looks like you might have the best chance to take this to six and a half. Then he knocks it down to five and a half, throws me a loop as I'm on the way to the studio. But anyway, uh, we have both of you on at the same time because we wanted to give the folks outside of the state of Nevada, not the so-called sharp minds in Nevada who know exactly you know, what to expect if they walk into your book or into one of your books, Jason. But I wanted to give people a, a feeling outside of the state of Nevada, what we're looking at from you two guys. And Mark, we know prop betting has become so popular, especially at the Strip Hotel Sportsbook. Tourists are in love with betting Super Bowl props more than they are cider total half the time. But you operate a non-hotel, non-strip property. So what's your split with side and total action versus props since you're not really dealing with the tourists as much or the casual betters. It is amazing what ha has happened to, to prop wagering in the last you know 20 years. When I started in the business, they, there wasn't such thing as a prop, and then there were a few, and then now there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. But uh, at the at uh, at Jerry's Nugget, uh, again because of our unique situation, um, props is not as big a percentage of of handle as, as a lot of places. We do have all the sharps come in. They know that they're going to see unique numbers at our place like they do every day. Uh, they know that we're not copying uh, uh, props from everywhere, and they know also, also we're going to put some opinions into the lines like we always do. Uh, but as far as percentage of, of action, it's no more than 20% wow. uh, of our total handle. And I suspect that it would be lower. I didn't know it would be as low as 20%. Now, that's got to be almost the opposite end of the perspective for you guys who operate, you know, books up and down the strip in Las Vegas. Yeah, obviously, props are extremely popular, as we touched on. Uh, for us, it's about th only about 30% of the money is uh, compared to the full game comes in on the props, but over 70% of the ticket count is going to be on props as opposed to the game because the limits are going to be a lot higher on the game. That's the reason. Either of you guys exposed on a, on a prop anywhere, does it get that big as far as, you know, maybe a single prop bet by somebody? I that, think, you know. yeah, I think just the general, will there be a safety and all those things? Okay. Everybody's going to, every, all the tourist properties are going to be, you know, in a bad situation. It happened a couple times in the last few years. Uh, the only props that we've really moved a lot are the Cam Newton props. I think Cam Newton rushing yards opened eight and a half, had a, uh, sorry, rushing attempts opened eight and a half, had to move that all the way to nine and a half, mm -hmm. for example. Um, and then we did take a lot of uh, smarter action on Broncos plus seven and a half. Figure, you know, if the line's five, five and a half, 
only going to cost you about 20 cents sure. more to get the seven and a half numbers. We had to move that one, but other than that, not really that much yet. You remember Bob Stupak, the Polish Maverick? Absolutely. You remember all the ink he got both nationally and internationally when he was plucking down seven figure wagers on Super Bowls. And we're talking, you know, 30 years ago. And, and I'm trying to space it off the name of the book. Little Caesars, was that where he, he got Most famous likely, for? Yeah. yeah, Little Caesars on the Strip, which of Gene Mayday's place. Gene Mayday. Well, that was incredible when I first got to Vegas and, and was hanging out there. But I was going to ask you, what's the biggest bet you've taken on a Super Bowl in your career behind the counter? You go back to, I think you told me the Redskins and the Raiders Super Bowl. What's the biggest bet you've ever taken? Uh, when I was offshore, and that was mm -hmm. nine years of my of my 30-plus uh, year career, uh, we took $2 million on, on a you? wager. Um, Obviously, at Jerry's Nugget, we take much smaller wagers, but uh, uh, there are people out there that, uh, that that wager that kind of money, and, and uh, the, the place I was in at that time took pretty much anything from anybody at that time. I was doing a video with Jim Feist, which the folks could watch here at wagertalk.com, and I mentioned that my favorite Super Bowl, and I just really got into sports betting in a serious way, not just betting a few bucks here and there as entertainment, was uh, the 1991 Super Bowl between the Giants and the Bills, where Scott Norwood misses that field go wide right from 47 yards out. Mark, I understand uh, you and a, and a guy I worked with on a few uh, TV shows way back when uh, had a little interest in that particular uh, football game when you were at the Sands. Super Bowl 25. Uh, Bob and I, uh, again, were obviously, um, it was something that we were really proud of. We, uh, we, we put out our own numbers and uh, we took <laughs> something that you don't normally do. We took a big stand on that Super Bowl we loved. Uh, the Giants. We had the Giants uh, on the money line and the under. Uh, that was the perfect result for the house for us personally, and uh, it was a, a really fond memory that that Super Bowl. 25. I, I was running around like you would expect a 24-year-old kid who just start, really made his first real serious monetary bet on that game. And uh, I guess you guys were also Bob. By the way, worked with Gemini for a few years back in the 90s on a couple of TV shows. Uh, Matt's or Matt, Jason. Some guys like to say that about 80 percent or so of the Super Bowl tickets will be written over the final 48 hours leading up to kickoff. Is it still that way where you guys see upwards of 80% of the action coming in late? Yeah, that's right. I mean, before I got here on Thursday afternoon, we had written about 25% of what we wrote all last year. So that's probably about the right number. I heard you guys took a big wager on Denver, which is the reason, the main reason you guys brought it from six down to, you know, five and a half earlier this week. Yeah, it was five and a half down to five. And as I mentioned before, there was about 85% of the money on the uh, Panthers down to 60%. It was because we did take a big bet at the five and a half number on the Broncos. So obviously that's going to push the price down. Seven figure? Not quite seven That's figures, but short, but close to it. Any sharp action on Carolina before the number went crazy for either one of you guys? We did have some people try, try to make a play on the three and a half, thinking it might go. Mm -hmm. um, most of the sharp bet weave action is kind of guys trying to pick off the prop numbers and some mm -hmm. people on the under. This is a question for both of you, so either one can start this off. What is your books, we'll start with you, Mark, what is your books best case and worst case scenarios on Sunday? Uh, Perfect uh, example, when we just listened to Jim Feist talk about it, would be favorite winning, not covering. So Carolina by one, two, three, uh, and, uh, and under would be the best result right now. Um, and that's usually the case sure. as long as I've been in the business. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to bet the dog on the money line, the favorite on the point spread, and if it lands in the middle, the house usually makes has their best day. Do you think that, I mean, not only that, is that sound reasonable to you also at CG Technologies, I'm guessing, yeah, right? Yeah, we're, we're in the same spot. Absolutely. One through three is the best. The four is still pretty good, and then once you hit the five number, kind of no good. Is there, because of all the action we saw as far as the tickets written uh, on Carolina to start, we have seen some buyback now, so maybe it's not going to be any big difference. But do you think there's going to be a different situation with the value on the money line on Super Bowl Sunday? Because as Mark, you just mentioned, you know, you see so much, so many people who want to bet the underdog on the money line in the Super Bowl. But are we going to see a little bit of a flip flop on that because of the way this line moved when it first was set? Yeah, I think you can. I, I, we talked about earlier, you know, there is a situation where you can take Carolina on the money line and take the Broncos plus the points and actually get pretty good value there because, you know, you'd end up being at risk a lot less than you would be if you were to just bet Broncos plus the, the five or whatever the number is because of those money line bets on the Broncos that we're expecting to come throughout the weekend. Mark, one of the biggest advantages of playing at Jerry's Nugget, you have the highest onboard parlays anywhere. Explain what that means. Uh, if, if you bet football or basketball, uh, at Jerry's Nugget, uh, across, over the counter, uh, you're going to get uh, higher returns on your on your parlay wagers 
from two through eight teams uh, higher than anywhere in the world. Uh, we're paying 13 and a half to five on the Super Bowl. That's our normal two team, uh, and that includes sides, totals, uh, everything. So uh, if you're playing a, if you're playing parlays, it's always value uh, to play to Jerry's. Make that play and then go grab that prime rib and I'll <laughs> tell you. Go. Uh, real quickly, final score. Uh, Denver 23 to 20. All right, Denver. How about you, Jason? Final score? I think low scoring. I'm going to go Panthers 20, Broncos 16. Best for us, so I'll pick it. It's four guys I've talked to now in the videos, and I've yet to hear one guy give out the over. So good stuff. Real quickly, you guys opened up Cosmo. You guys opened up a book at the Cosmopolitan earlier this week. Yeah, the, uh, the upstairs book moving downstairs, much bigger space. There's, um, you know, foosball and shuffleboard, big bar and stuff. So it's a pretty fun spot, so people can go check that out. It's Jason Symbol, CG Technologies. He's Mark Dufty, Jerry's Nuggets standalone book. You'll want to check both properties out, all the properties with CG, and give your, uh, do yourself a favor if you come to Vegas and check out Jerry's Nugget and all the cool stuff, old Vegas feeling that goes on with Mark and his staff down there. Guys, thanks a lot for coming on board. It's been a pleasure working with both of you this entire football season. We look to continue to do so in basketball. Thanks, Scott. Good thanks. stuff from the guys. Stick around for more videos from a whole lot more handicappers, betters, Marco D'Angelo is going to be up here, Brian Leonard, Sports Cheetah, all the guys right here at wagertalk.com.